for me with the celebrations, I think, look, I, I've gone past the idea of sort of having to go at teams for celebrating. I just still think there's a little bit of immaturity in the celebrations, which means that probably. to me it felt like relief that they weren't eight yeah, points but, behind. But, but probably, but it's a team that didn't win for, yeah. for so long, so yeah, obviously the experience is not going to be there. You will question the fact that your leader needs to bring that, you know, and we can see the, in, the incident of, you know, the captain taking a picture. It's exactly the same situation as last year. I remember during a game, you know, they all went together, they were losing 2-0 or 3-0, and during the game, they all got together on the pitch talking about what? They went on and lose the title. So, of course, the experience will play a major part, but you gain experience but that, but by that Relief is understandable, experience. isn't it? Given yeah, that yeah. we said at the start of the game, they had to win this match here. Yeah, they had to. Listen, it was a huge moment for Arsenal because even for Arteta at the end of the game, I was thinking about this. If, if Liverpool would have won today, we'd be saying, you know, look, Arsenal can't win the title. They're out of it. Never mind, you know, can they win it? And before long, people will be questioning Mikel Arteta. Listen, Mikel Arteta's done a brilliant job at Arsenal, but he's been here sort of four or five years, and sooner or later, that question will be, is he the guy to bring the title back to Arsenal? If Arsenal would have lost today, a lot of that talk would have started, whether that was right or wrong, it would have been. And I just think, as Gary said before, that relief at the end from Arteta, uh, you know, the players that they're back in, back in the hunt, if you like. But for me, if I'm being totally honest, I think today's result's a better result for Man City than it is for Arsenal. You said before you think Arsenal might have the edge on Liverpool and Liverpool are more clinical. I think Manchester City, a look at Liverpool, is a big threat in terms of the title because they've been there before and they've got players who've done it before. So for me, tonight, I think the biggest winners are Man City. Yeah, I well, yeah, I agree. I think I uh, haven't watched the game live today. I know that Liverpool have an off day and I still, Arsenal are still nice on the eye, but I still couldn't see these two teams finish ahead of Man City. I just can't, obviously. Listen, I've been proved wrong before, but we look where City are. You look with uh, De Bruyne coming back, Haaland's available. I don't see them two teams going right to the end that I think, in terms of keeping up with Man City, I, I just can't see it. Tricky one for you, Gail, because you've obviously won titles with both of them, but, mm -hmm. but make a case for Arsenal for us. I think the case is the game tonight. You know, If you go eight points, it's very difficult. And obviously, you know, it's a long way to go. I still believe that City, like Jamie said, I think they're, they're the team to beat because tonight we're talking about experience, City go experience, we're talking about bench, City got the bench. We're talking about quality. They've got the quality. And we're talking about also picking the right team with the right players. City got all of this, not for the last few games, but for the last. You said make a case for Arsenal. <laughs> no, no. I'm getting depressed for Arsenal. But, but what I'm saying is that I, I, what I'm saying is that I do believe Arsenal are equipped, but they're fighting against a very strong Man City. But I do believe Arsenal can go all the way because you gain experience within, you know, games. And I think today was a huge game for them. It is. Pep, it don't, is. Don't, don't, forget mean, about, Pep, don't forget about Pep. Pep. Pep's the man. How many, listen. Of course, but today we play, I mean, Liverpool is probably one of the top team in Europe, you know, and the, the, the statistic that you just mentioned, two games lost, you know, over the last 34 few, games. I mean, you have to give credit where it's due. I think today Arsenal performed really well in every aspect of the game, you know. Tactically, Arteta was spot on. The player played the way they were supposed to play. You know, it's the first move, the first goal is the move of the game and you could tell that they've been working on it during, during the, the week Arsenal, and it happened. Arsenal, if, if Liverpool or Arsenal are going to win this league, they're going to have to beat Man City. So Arsenal have got to go to Man City, Man City have got to go to Anfield. They will have to do that, obviously, a lot more than that. But you, you, I know I think Arsenal beat City, didn't they, early on the season? Yeah, one. very tight game. For, Man City, you think of what they did in the games against Arsenal last season, they probably won them, won them the, the, you know, the title. That's what both teams are going to have to do in the second half of the season. They're going to have any chance at all. The, the thing about Mikel Arteta is in the Arsenal team that he's got here, I don't look at them and think that he can get any more out of them. I think yeah. that but he's honestly achieving the maximum with this group of players, and that's a great job. So what he's doing is fantastic. I just wish he had one player at the top end of the pitch. Do you think that's a mistake, Gary, that they didn't address that if there was money available to do that in January? But yeah. I but there was a money available in the summer. I, there, there was. They, they spent £70 million yeah. pounds on Havertz, Havertz, or £65 Havertz, million. Pounds. And I watch him today, Havertz, when he's moving into the box. He's a different type of player, but he's quite languid. There's no change of pace into the box. There's no change of direction. There's no little darts. And then I think of sort of Jesus when he plays, and he's everywhere but where you want him to be. He's everywhere, Jesus. I love him to bits, but he's literally, like, when you want him in the centre of the six-yard box, he's probably on the right wing or he's at right back. And then you look at Enketi, who's probably the most natural out of all of them, maybe just isn't up to the standard of the the two, so all three of them have deficiencies, which mean that they don't deliver. Make Saka and Martinelli today were sensational. They were putting balls into the box. They were just ready to be there and knocked in, and they're just it's not just, there. I, I feel Arsenal sort of last season, probably this season, right now, they're probably where Liverpool were before they sort of got 
the goalkeeper and Van Dijk. You know that, that player that you just think, oof, just elevates them. I still think Arsenal are waiting for that but player to really elevate them. You know, their own De Bruyne or their they Haaland, well, What can he do? Because like. obviously we've, we've talked about this, everyone's talked about Arsenal and the lack of the striker. What can Mikel Arteta do now with the players that he's got to make one of those players score 10 goals in the last 15 games. Yeah, what, 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 what can he do now? That's the bit I keep thinking. What can he do? Who I, can he put in there? I think there? it's what you just said. I think with what you got, he's doing a, an amazing job. We're saying that they spend money, 70 million for this player. OK, is it big money in today's football, 70 million for a striker? I don't think so. You know, 70 million, maybe back in the days, you, you, you were getting a top striker. 70 million is very light. OK, Alan was, you know, different story. But usually if you want 20, 20 goals player, you go way above 70 million, you know. So if they didn't bring anyone, it's because they perhaps couldn't. Well, he's not a striker, does he? No. We still don't know what his best position no. is. No. Wait, I, think, I think you could have got a striker for 50 or 60 million. Who? Or even 70. What? Well, let's say I mean, Richard Allison's not talking, available. You're, you're but let's talking say, about what, what would you do to get the goals. I don't think these players are all of a sudden going to become great goal scorers. I think we probably know what they are. How can that cameo? How I can know, they get that? My point being is. Look at the other end of the pitch. Arsenal defensively are fantastic. Yeah. So sometimes it's not a case of, right, we need to score more goals because I'm not quite sure they've got a goal score. Well, I'm not, I know they haven't. I think we all know that. But if they're better at the other end, that gives them a chance. You don't have to could, score three could, goals. Could Jesus, though, not adapt his game for the last part of the season and just play in the width of the box in the final third where he makes those... Because he's, he's got... He must have the experience now, Jesus. Do you think he's a finisher? Do you no, think but he's just, a I'm, talking about, I'm talking about just moving centre-backs across the, sort of across the near post. They never have anybody in the centre of the goal making those little runs. But he's been doing it for the last five years, I know, he? yeah. I think he's the kind of guy that <laughs> creates I'm space for, for, for his teammates. I think he's good at creating space, you know, yeah. so he will drift wide, he will hold the ball. He's a very complete player. Easier to... About, it's not about Chris Jesus, as I've said this before. Liverpool won a title with Firmino up front. And it didn't, see, it didn't seem goal. a problem for, for Arsenal last season when they came so close. But do you think this is going to be the one thing that, that might cost them? I think you need to score goals to win trophies, you know. So you can be good defensively, but if you want to... Uh, that, that's how I feel. If you want to win trophies, you need to score a goal. If you do nil-nil, then you don't concede, but you don't win the game. I think when you see a team like City, that's why you were saying try to prove a point for, for Arsenal, but how can you make a point for Arsenal when you have a team like City who are just two points behind the leaders and just getting back Haaland and De Bruyne. I mean, this is just crazy. You, can you really compete against them? You know, it's, it's just too much.